Hey everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmadev. Today I will record a slightly longer video that will show an app I found. It's to do implemented using React and Redux. And I will fork this repo. I will download it locally. I will start testing it using Cypress. And I will write this test on GitHub Actions. So this will teach you everything I'm usually doing day to day and I'm doing for web application testing. So we on GitHub, let's fork this repository. I'll fork it under my account. It might take a second for the page to load. Okay, now we have it. Let's get the code. I will clone it into the local repo to do React Redux. And let's open it in VS Code right away. And what I will do, I will install typical dependencies. So I will install as a Cypress as a dev dependency, it's prettier so I can format the code automatically. And just for future, I will install start, server, and test. And you'll see why. Okay, it's finishing installation. Since we installed prettier, we need to copy prettier settings, otherwise my VS Code prettier plugin does not format the code. Prettier settings. And here's the trick I play to initialize the new Cypress spec. I have a real utility called Bachmut of CLY in it, and we'll just use bare settings. We just need a spec file, we don't need anything else. Okay, so Cypress JSON, because this is a React project using React scripts, it will run at base URL 3000. And our first spec, we'll just say it adds to this. And all we need to do right now is visit the base URL we defined in the Cypress JSON file. So let's uh, start our application. Perfect. And in another terminal, I can go to the same folder and open Cypress using Cypress open command. We could switch for browser, but the default Electron is good enough for this test. Another app is right here running. So let's add a couple of to-dos. First thing we need to do is pick this input element. So if we inspect the element, well, it doesn't really have a good way. There is a placeholder, so why don't we use a placeholder attribute? That's fine. So in our spec, we'll say sci get input and then the placeholder selector. And let's say type learn Cypress and followed by enter key. Perfect, we can see that it found the right input element and type learn Cypress and it appeared in the list of tasks. And why don't we continue typing in the same element, same input box. Now we have two to-do items and it shows there are two, two pending tasks. And let's just see what the element is right here. And this is where we have a problem, right? It's This is an element of any kind of ID, attribute, or even class, but allows us to easily find it. It's all dynamic. So here's where we'll go to the source code and we'll make this particular element more testable. So we'll go under the components and it's probably somewhere here under, no, it's not under the form, maybe under the app. Yes, it's under the app. So right here we can say, okay, We'll create a span around the pending task so we don't change the formatting and we'll give it a data sci attribute, say pending count, for example, and it just surrounds the number itself. Let's restart the app. Notice it looks exactly the same, but now it's a little bit more robust and now we can even find it using the selector playground. Or maybe not. Let's see. So I have data sci. And let me select the element. It does have, well, I guess the top level element kind of prevents us from finding it. But okay, if we cannot use the element selector playground, we can still write the test ourselves. So this is the same attribute, just like we used before. So we'll say after we typed, there should be an element with data psi, right? And it should, be, should have text too, right? So we got the element and we confirmed that it has the text too. 
We can shorten this because we're checking an element with select and text. We can use Cypress command contains. And there we can just apply to arguments the selector and the expected text. So that's nice. What was next? Well, we add a couple to do's. Now we probably need to delete the to do's. So why don't we find the to do? Let's say learn JavaScript and delete it. Well, how do we select one of those to do's? Again, doesn't have good selectors. So what we can do is go to the to do's and a single to do and add a data psi attribute. And now we can say psi contains data psi equals to do. I mean, if there are no spaces, you don't have to quote it. And let's say learn JavaScript. Okay, so now that we found learn JavaScript inside that element, we have to find this image. And it has alt, which we can use. So we can say find alt equals remove and click on it. And how many elements should we have right now? Well, the pending should be one. And we can say get all to do's. And this should have length one. Because after deleting one element, one should remain. And while we add it, why don't we confirm that when we end our to do's, there are two of them. The pending count is two. Then we remove one element and we confirm there is only one remaining. We still have to confirm that the one remaining is the one that we did not delete. So a good idea here would be to say, okay, when you delete learn JavaScript, you still have Cypress, learn Cypress to do. And the site contains has existing uh, assertion built in, so we don't have to say it, but we can say should be visible because we can confirm it, the user can see that to do. It's not just in the DOM, it actually exists. Excellent. Now here's how I run Cypress Open and the app locally. I'm going to exit the app and then I have to go to another terminal and stop the application. And the better way is to go to my package JSON and look at the scripts. And I have the scripts to start the app and some other utility scripts. Imagine I want to start the app and then open Cypress when the application has finished uh, starting and is responding on localhost 3000. I can introduce a script dev. And here is where you can use start, server, and test utility that I install a little bit before. Right? So I can say uh, it really just needs three arguments. It needs the name of npm script to start the application and the local host that you want to listen and when it responds, when you know the application has started, and then you probably want to run sci open. Okay, so in a single command, we can start the app, make sure it responds, open Cypress. And let's see how it works. Running React scripts, the server responds, right? And now it will open Cypress GUI. Perfect. And now when we finish with the test and we exit Cypress, it stops the application as well. So with a single command, we can do everything. And just because it's so common to start the app using start, you don't have to specify it. You can just say start server and test, localhost, or whatever URL to check, and then the second command. Another thing, it's so common to test localhost that you can just provide the port number. And start server and test has an alias when it installs itself. So you can say start test. So this is the command I usually prefer. And it could be also shortened. You know, I can just say Cypress open because I don't want to create a script just to call this command. So this is how I usually run uh, application and end-to-end -end test when running locally. Okay, we are good. We can add all those new files. We can say added Cypress test. And now we have to test it on CI because it's not enough to run tests locally. For running Cypress tests, I'll use GitHub Actions. And the best way for running GitHub Actions with Cypress tests is to use my 
reusable GitHub Action Cypress workflow. Okay, so this is the whole file that we need to use. Well, we need to add starting the server, but that's okay. So we'll say GitHub workflows, so YAML, and we're gonna copy paste what we had in this readme. This uses Cypress GitHub Action under the hood to check out the source code, install dependencies, cache and PM dependencies, cache Cypress binary, and then run Cypress tests in headless mode. The only other thing we have to do, remember how we had to add, start the app, so we'll say weave, and now we can pass parameters. So we'll say start, and then what, what is our command, and PM start. We can also specify wait on, HTTP localhost 3000, just to be very explicit. But in this case, we don't need it because our application starts fast enough so that we don't have to specifically wait for it. All right, so this workflow will run on every push. So let's see how it works. GitHub, edit CI, we push it to the CI, and here's our fork. We can click under the actions and we can see the action. The workflow is already there. Cool thing, we can create the status badge on the main. So we don't check every branch, we just care about the main branch. And here we can say, okay, just give everyone a badge um, when you run. So right now we're still running the first test, so it doesn't do much, but we can say edit CI badge. And a very useful utility I always use most CIs understand that if a commit message has skip CI in square brackets, they won't run tests for that commit when you push. Okay, so here's our workflow. Notice it grabbed a job. It checked out the code and it's running Cypress tests. So we'll let it refresh and show us the output. Okay, install Cypress. It's verified Cypress before running and it's caching it, which is important if you want your test to start quicker on the next build. Use, using npm start, started the application, starting the development server, starting Cypress, and our task has passed. Beautiful. So we know the application can start, can be visited uh, in, in a real browser. We can add to-dos, delete to-dos, and it deletes the right to-do. So this is pretty much all you have to do to have full end-to-end -end test in your project. The only other thing, how I would improve it, I probably will start throwing the test results and videos and screenshots to the Cypress dashboard so I can inspect the failure. Because if something fails, it will generate a video and a screenshot that I want to see to debug it. But this is my day-to-day -day work and the way I write tests every day.